On episode 215 of the Jeep Talk Show, we'll talk about the Super Bowl Jeep commercials and how a famous NFL player is selling off his $90,000 Jeep. In Wrangler Talk, I go over some of my thoughts on those who talk down to other Jeep owners. We have some great reviews to share. We'll hear from the mind of Nikki G and play your voicemails. Josh and Tamer are going to highlight some of the cool Jeep gear stuff as well. I'll talk about why it's a good idea to have a battery tender. Tony talks about a no-start issue on one of his Jeeps. Tammy talks about an upcoming wheeling trip and some current cold soft top woes. All coming up on this week's Jeep Talk Show. You're listening to a 4x4, 4x4 Radio Network Podcast. Are you ready? It's the G Talk Show. With Tammy on Wrangler. Tony and Josh on Cherokee. So sit back. Strap in. And brace yourself. First week in G. Well, if you've got some coin laying around, and I'm talking serious coin, well, then you can have this Jeep, or at least a shot at it anyways. Now, and if any of you are out there are sports nuts at all, then you are probably still riding the wave of after Super Bowl adrenaline. And with the big game being finally over, the sports newscasters are clamoring to for any little tidbit of news that fits the bill. Enter the big announcement last Sunday from the famed Seattle Seahawks player who, in a tweet during the game, announced that he was retiring. Don't worry, he's got plenty of cash to fall back on, as it's been reported that Marshawn Lynch has got every last dime of his nearly $50 million contract, as he's allegedly been just living on his endorsement money. So, with a bank account that big, why would he have to sell off some of his most prized possessions? Well, two of them, actually. Both of Marshawn Lynch's Jeeps and other items are currently available on eBay. And no, it's not to pay rent or baby mama alimony. Obviously, he's got that covered. The infamous Beast Mode Jeeps are up for grabs to help raise money for Lynch's Fam First Family Foundation. The opening bid for the 2016 custom-built Jeep Wrangler is $90,000. Jeez. And if you think you may want to just, for grins and giggles, place your own bid on this thing, well, it's probably not going to happen, as all bidding is restricted to, quote-unquote, pre-approved buyers only. But however, a custom Baby Beast powered wheels, a Power Wheels Jeep <laughs> is starting at $2,400 for those with a milder budget, but still anxious to help. Although Lynch's Beast Mode store all only recently opened in Oakland and the eBay auctions end Friday, that's tomorrow as we are recording this. So for you podcast listeners, sorry you missed the bill. So if you guys are looking to uh, make your own Beast Quake on the streets, well, you better start rounding up some cash ASAP because these Jeeps are probably going to go to the highest bidder. Well, that's exactly what they're going to go. So speaking of Super Bowl, is any, did anyone catch the Jeep ads? In case you were wondering, yes, Jeep did spend a lot of money and purposefully only used a third of the screen. For 60 seconds of the ad that has a lot of people asking why, FCA <laughs> dropped a whopping $10 million. The unique musical score, black and white photos, and the use of a lot less real estate on the screen than any other Super Bowl commercial ever made. But why? Well... It's to make you and I and just about anybody else who's watching it talk about Jeep, of course. And it appears to have worked as the Social Media Spheres podcast, talk shows, and every last Jeep-based website on the planet is buzzing with discussions of the commercials and its unprecedented use of some very expensive airtime. Big thanks to all of you guys out there to help us out each and every week by submitting stories for This Week in Jeep. If you guys have a story that you think we should be reporting on or response to any one of our stories, Please send an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com. Well, hey, you guys, you know those ad, those Jeep ads won um, some Clio awards, by the way. I didn't know they won awards. That's, uh, yeah. I, I'm not surprised, though, because out of all of the, the cacophony of different ads, and I have to say, I got my tip of the hat goes to Doritos uh, for that baby uh, commercial. The baby one? Uh, ad had me falling out of my chair. Yeah. But, uh, but no, Jeep definitely brought a more intellectual vibe uh, to the commercial scene uh, with this one, uh, with this round of commercials, rather. And, and right. it really kind of made you think versus, um, you know, just, you know, throwing uh, you know, idiot stuff in front of you to, you know, please your mind, as it were. Actually made you use your mind, think about it, and, and actually, I enjoy the commercials a lot. Yeah, they actually said they... Um, but Iris Worldwide was trying to be different than your typical make-everybody-laugh commercial. Well, they sure did. 
I'll have to go and look at those. I uh, did not watch the Super Bowl, um, did not realize it was on. I think there was a, a lot of tweets uh, that uh, gave me the clue that the Super Bowl was on. I went, oh, yeah, it's February. I bet you it is Super Bowl <laughs> time. But yeah, the 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 ads uh, are uh, probably the, the best part of uh, of the Super Bowl for, this for a year, lot of people. I, I would say the ads. I, I was yeah, I was disappointed. I'm I'm a big Super Bowl commercial fan. I know that's mm-hmm. kind of weird to say, but uh, no, despite, it's you know, rooting sense. for some good football. I always look forward to some great commercials each and every year. And uh, and there was a couple ones that stood out uh, this year. Jeep, of course, being one of them. Um, and that Doritos that I mentioned earlier. Uh, but all in all, very disappointed in the uh, in the offering. For as, as much as these ads cost, you'd think that they no would kidding. have uh, spared no no other expense uh, and, and really written some good quality content. I wonder how much they uh, they spend on the commercials. Uh, I'm millions sure that, and millions. Well, a Jeep spent or FCA rather, I'm sure, is the one who cut the check. Ten million dollars for sixty seconds. Well, I'm, I'm uh, not I'm not referring to how much they pay the NFL or the the uh, the station uh, or the yeah. the broadcasting network. I'm talking about how much they actually spend making the commercial. Uh, probably 50 bucks. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I It'll think look good on your resume because this is yeah, going to be on right? the Super Bowl. <laughs> and I want to say, was it G, G, not Jeep, um, Doritos? I don't know. I think that those were like sent in ideas. Oh, that's oh in really? Like winner, winners I of a think contest. It was you Doritos. Know, give us, give us a, your idea of a perfect Super Bowl commercial and we just might yeah. use it. I you, think so. Well, you guys are aware that uh, Valentine's Day is uh, rolling up to us on uh, Sunday. Boo, boo, boo. <laughs> I read two things today. One was the average price, the average amount of money spent on uh, Valentine's Day is $515. Oh. I could Lord. get like some lights and I'm a definitely skip plate. below average. <laughs> I started, I actually saw this on Facebook. Uh, it was a local Fox affiliate that posted it. And I started to say, are these people single and hoping for sex or are they uh-huh. married? <laughs> because 500 bucks on, on Valentine's Day, oh. that seems incredible. And uh, going the Doritos angle, there's actually a Dorito bouquet that uh, apparently you can get where it's uh, r- roses, but it's made of Doritos. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> so you just you know you you hang those up and and, and upside down to let them dry you get a completely different effect so yeah, you know the true. uh that would be a the talk of the trailer park uh, a rose bouquet of doritos so <laughs> you're listening to jeep talk show the number one jeep podcast at my mom's house xjtalk.com it's where you go when you're not off road you already know about xj talk on facebook twitter and google plus but did you know we're on youtube as well we have often on road adventures how to's for fixing or augmenting your jeep besides man cannot live by sound alone right come see what we got at youtube.com slash user slash xj talk Don't forget to subscribe and make comments on our videos. And coming up later on Wrangler Talk, you know, I might need to get some tougher tougher skin if I'm going to keep all this social media stuff up. I'll tell you why. I bet. Yeah, the people uh, people are not shy on social media telling you exactly what they think they think. uh, Sometimes Mm -hmm. they don't know or don't think. Actually, there's a lot of not thinking on social media. So let me tell you about something that you should be thinking about, and that's the 4x4 mm-hmm. Radio Network, the Jeep Talk Show, 4x4 Podcast, Center Steer, and Muddy Microphone, and we have a new one. You guys know him. You love him. Cody does our grand adventure, uh, the Trail Adventure Podcast, uh, or trailchasers.net uh, uh, podcast, and uh, he's yet to do his first episode, but he is a member of the 4x4 Radio Network, and uh uh, he's actually the only one we didn't have to beg. So we were very proud of that. <laughs> or bribe. <laughs> or bribe. Uh, we'll be adding more shows to the lineup soon. You can visit the 4 x 4 radionetworkcom and listen to all these great podcasts simply by pressing the play button. There's no better place to get your 4x4 information. We mean that honestly, sincerely. Uh, that's the 4x4 Radio Network, www.4x4radionetwork.com. And you know what? We love hearing from everybody, all of you. So be sure to give us a call on our voicemail at 530-675-4102. Or you can jump over to our website at jeeptalkshow.com and leave us a message. Just click on the send questions comment button 
on the right hand corner of the screen. Yep, yep, right there on the side. It, uh, you click it and a little thing will pop out and uh, you'll get scared uh, briefly, but then it'll be okay and you just leave a message. Just try to calm down before you leave the message. Mm. <laughs> hey, this is Tony. And I'm Tammy. And this is Josh. And you've reached our 24-7 voicemail line. You guys know what to do, so at the beep, leave your message. Hey, Jeep Talk Show. This is Julia Johnny. This message is more for Tammy. I found... One of those purple Wranglers, which I know you want because it's purple. Oh, boy. Um, when I got my license, my dad had a 1998 Dodge Grand Caravan in purple. I didn't really want to drive it. It motivated me to buy my own vehicle. So that might be the way you could justify this. Just saying it's all. Because I know your kid is going to be getting his license soon. So yes. just say. All right. That's all. <laughs> the, As a matter the, of fact, he's um, putting off getting his license right now. He's he's able to get it, but he has nowhere to drive or anything. Um, but the purple grill inserts are a deterrent. So a purple Jeep would definitely be a deterrent. And I think it would be a deterrent for my husband who likes <laughs> to take my Jeep. The, uh, the first vehicle I ever drove was my mom's uh, car. And it was a powder blue 1973 AMC Gremlin. A uh, very oxidized, supposed to be red, now orange, 1978 Toyota pickup, long bed, oh, five see, speed standard that. cab. That was the very first vehicle. No, no, I take that. Well, that was the very first vehicle that, that I got to drive essentially by myself. The very first vehicle I ever technically drove was a old Jeep Wagoneer. Uh, sitting Ooh. on the lap of my grandfather as we were driving up to the mountain. I couldn't have been a day over five years old. Oh, cool. Yep. So there was no way I uh, that I wanted to, to drive a AMC Gremlin powdered blue around. Uh, but, uh, yep. So it all works out. But, uh, yeah, it was uh, that was a weird-shaped vehicle. Uh, of course, AMC, you know, it was kind of cool. AMC really did some really uh, neat designs. I wouldn't say they were good designs, but they were neat because they were uh, almost like Hot Wheels – uh, type design. Yes, they were. And and that was always cool to see. It was more futuristic than everybody else was doing, especially at that time with the, the boxy vehicles. Mm-hmm. And of course, I had to have a boxy vehicle when the Cherokee came out, but uh, but I digress. <laughs> so but I'm thinking the purple might be a good idea to keep my husband out, out of the Jeep. Oh, is it really a problem? Out of the driver's Tammy? seat. Is it well, a problem? It, I don't think it's well, a problem, is it? When the neighbor girl who is, Uh-oh. she's four, Oh, okay. saw him driving my Jeep and she told her mom, um, Miss Tammy's going to be mad because her, you know, Mr. Roberts driving the Jeep and he's not supposed uh. to be driving the Jeep. <gasps> so, even the tail. little girls know that it's my Jeep. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, let's get over to Nate. Hi, Jeep Talk Show. This is Nate. I'm a new listener and uh, as an owner of my own enthusiast site for the Wrangler platform, I really appreciate the uh, the amount of information you guys are throwing around in your site or in your uh, your podcast. Um, I listened to two episodes. I'm halfway through episode 213. Um, you guys had mentioned that you had a, a recent show about the automatic versus manual, which I haven't listened to yet, but I've been hearing some of the comments people have been uh, uh, or commentary, I should say, that people have been submitting to you guys about auto versus manual and key transmissions and especially uh, in episode 213 about the water in the transmission. Uh, uh, I believe his name was Nathan. Great name, by the way. Uh, <laughs> the same name me. Um, anyway, uh, I wanted to put in a little bit of clarification about the we're pressing the clutch while in water. Thing. Excellent. Uh, so, in a manual transmission, um, and I believe especially with the AX5 and 15, the bell housing between the motor and the transmission isn't sealed, right? So air, water, whatever can get in there. Uh, it was always my understanding that the reason you wouldn't want to push the clutch pedal down while in water, that it would allow water to get between the, uh, the clutch and the bell housing, uh, thus making your clutch useless because once water gets between there, you don't get friction and then you can't get moving. I, I never heard that they would allow water to get into your transmission because the input shaft on the transmission, uh, 
doesn't change just by pressing the clutch. Mm -hmm. uh, getting water into the bell housing, I mean, that might get water into the transmission, though I thought that was sealed. Uh, in fact, the entire housing should be sealed up until the breather on top. So I'm wondering if Nathan's problem was actually that he was getting water into the breather, even though he did mention that he had extended the breather. Um, so, you know, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, that that I don't think pushing the clutch will get water into the transmission. It'll get it in between the clutch and the flywheel, which will uh, be bad, but it shouldn't ruin your transmission. Uh, also, there was some talk about the AX5 and the AX15, and there was a little bit of... Uh, I don't want to call it disinformation, but mistaken information about uh, uh, what uh, what models those those transmissions came in. Um, I've owned five YJs at this point, or sorry, five Wranglers, three of them being YJs at this point, and um, I could say that the AX5 came with the four-cylinder YJs up until, well, I believe until the, actually up into the DJ. It may have even gone all the way... I forget when they stopped the AX5, but that usually came with the four-cylinder Wrangler. Uh, there's probably other motors that. So uh, the so I'm saying the AX5 is behind the four cylinders. Uh, the AX15 came behind the six-cylinder up until somewhere in the early 2000s, where the TJ switched to the ND3550. Now, these are both five-speed transmissions. The AX5 is also a five-speed transmission. Uh, when they went to the six-speed, they switched to a different manufacturer, uh, a different model. Uh, you don't have that information off the top of my head. But at any rate, I uh, just wanted to get that information to you guys. Uh, again, appreciate the show. Keep up the good work. Thanks. So real quick, before we dive into this one, uh, I just want to make sure that everybody knows when you call in, if you have a website, a forum, uh, a, a, a podcast, I don't care, Feel free to say the name. Feel free to say the site. Uh, we, we do not have a problem uh, with you guys uh, shamelessly plugging things because that's what we do. I do that anytime I get a chance. So, uh, uh, you know, if you're a competitor, don't worry about it. Just jump in there. And, and, I, and I've said this before. I'll say it again. Anybody that can do a better job than uh, what I can do or what we can do, have at it. Uh, we need to grow and get better, too. So, uh, don't worry, we're not going to be defensive about you doing the same thing we're doing. Uh, throw out the name of the, your uh, of your forum. Uh, we'd we'd love to hear about it. So, great information on the uh, the um, uh, various models of uh, uh, transmissions. And the only thing I can think of, uh, I have not actually looked at a diagram to to see if this is valid or not. But I would imagine there has to be a seal on the front. Uh, the um, I guess that would be the input shaft uh, where uh, on the manual transmission where it actually sticks into the um, uh, the pressure plate and the clutch disc and uh, actually attaches to the clutch disc. There has to be a seal on that main shaft. And I'm wondering that uh, whenever the clutch pedal is depressed, if perhaps it wasn't moving that shaft slightly uh, and a worn seal or maybe uh, bad bearings or whatever, and it was opening up a... Uh, a way for the water to get inside the transmission at that point. So uh, I, I guess we'll never know, but maybe you've run across that. Maybe you've had that issue where uh, the front seal was bad or uh, bearings and a front seal were bad and you were uh, getting uh, fluid in there. And it, I guess it would always be able to get in there, uh, but it probably would be more noticeable with pressure off to one side, uh, assuming that it puts pressure on the on that, that uh, shaft at all. I don't know. You know, I've talked about uh, about this recently to some some guys. First off, you know, transmissions are are one thing that is I'm going to say one of my weaker points. I I would not try and tackle a transmission rebuild. I'll pull one out, swap one out, something like that. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to to rebuilding or or doing any kind of internal work to a transmission, man, that is all Greek to me. So I you know I I turn to people who you know do that sort of stuff for a living uh, or guys that have uh, more experience with that sort of stuff than I do for advice and whatnot and, and one thing that I that I've heard from a couple different sources so far is that a lot of this uh, you know water in a manual transmission thing is indicative more to stock transmissions or stock clutches than say an aftermarket now you throw in like a you know um, uh, twin plate. Uh, uh, um, you know, aftermarket one. I'm trying to think of one of the one of the bigger uh, manufacturer names, but uh, um, it's escaping me right now. Center Force. There we go. That's the one that I, that I was looking for. 
Um, you throw something like a center force clutch in your Jeep. Um, I hear they they are a lot they're they're a lot more robust, a lot uh, easier able to stand up to the water and grit and mud and stuff that that can and sometimes will get in there. So um, whether that's true or not, I don't know. I don't have any personal experience with that. Uh, but it is one thing I heard from a couple different sources. So, Well, I would be really surprised if there was a way that you could keep uh, water and mud and grit out or off of the clutch disc because that's kind of open. That, that, mm. whole, that whole thing yeah. is open. But actually getting mo- water and mud inside the transmission, that's the thing that confuses me on a manual transmission. That's the part that really confuses me. I don't see how it's going to get in there. Uh, and I certainly don't understand how it's going to get in there. I mean, I understand it could get in there over time, the breathing tube, so on and so forth. But, uh, but the statement um, that I can't remember who made, I guess it was Nathan that, that made that, uh, that you, you don't press the clutch in when you're in water. Otherwise, the transmission fills up with water. That, that to me, mm. just doesn't make sense. Now, I'm not talking about a, a Jeep transmission. Uh, my first vehicle was a, a standard transmission, and, and I actually broke a synchronizer ring and had to fix it. So I was very happy at the age of 16, I was able to open up a manual transmission and clearly see how easy it was oh, put together wow. and fix it uh, all by myself. So uh, my dad never was into uh, repairing vehicles, so it was all self-learned stuff without the internet. <laughs> so it was just... <laughs> yeah. Imagine how we survived. I don't know. Oh, the YouTube videos alone, you know, just going over there and looking to see what, what to expect. That, 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 was, that was a foreign concept. You had to pop it open and look and uh, figure it out from there, uh, which I can do. It's just not much fun. Uh, it's a lot more fun sitting in front of the television or doing something else besides uh, figuring out a mechanical uh, situation. But anyway, great, uh, great voicemail. Thank you very much for calling us. And uh, here's somebody we haven't heard from in a while. Hey guys, this is Super Croc again. Hey Croc. Today I'd like to talk about the Super Bowl. Super Bowl, 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 Bowl. Yeah, that's a crazy game. I mean, it's like yeah. only two touchdowns, one offense, one defense. They kick off and craziness with the losing team quarterback, he who shall not na- be named, even though he was MVP of the year, which is kind of funny, but his outbursts, and then Manning, either one of their reactions, Eli or Peyton, crazy, right? Oh, in that puppy, monkey, baby cre- oh, commercial that, that is a still haunting <laughs> dreams. Yeah crazy. But there was a couple of good Jeep commercials, which were really good commercials. Even though they didn't have any XJs, which really saddened me. <laughs> but that would have been a hell of a thing to I say. Yeah, they can't right? be perfect. They are fiat now, so... And... Yeah. So it was a crazy Super Bowl game. Now... Just wait. In the divisional games uh, for next year, I'm predicting Green Bay versus Vikings with Green Bay going to Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, talk to you later. Uh oh. Oh, them uh, fighting words. The yeah, disconcerting I think look. That was. I think that was a personal jab. It was. Yeah. It there, was. You could, you could tell. <laughs> just, just a little. You know, uh, if if Jeep had wanted to put something. Uh, truly truly amazing in the super bowl uh commercial what they could have done was put a uh, an ad with a uh 2016 i guess uh jeep cherokee trailhawk edition uh with a five inch lift on 33s or 35s that (laughs) would have been amazing sure Especially if it was red, right? Well, I don't care. I mean, just just <laughs> lifting can't it. can't be choosers after all. Just <laughs> lifting it. And if you want to put a custom front bumper and a winch on the front of that th- that baby too, uh, and I'm talking about actually doing it, no photoshopping, which is a very a very popular thing. But uh, uh, I I just can't. I, I, I don't know. Did we actually talk about it on this show where somebody was? Uh, uh, I think it was Steve 4.3 LXJ sent me a link to a, a post on another forum. Uh, about uh, this guy that had bought a Cherokee. I think it was CherokeeTalk.com. He had bought a, a new Cherokee, 
and he was trying to figure out how to lift it. And he went to Cherokee Talk because he's got a Cherokee. And he was over there asking them, you know, I, I'd like to put it like a two inch lift. The the nose seems to be a little lower than the back end. So I'd at least like to level it. And these guys were having to tell him the sad, sad news. Uh, after he even said in the post, I bought it because it was a Jeep. And, you know, you can do things with Jeeps. You can modify them and do and take them off road. And mm. ah, no. And if you guys don't recall, if you're a listener and, you know, you, you're looking at this Jeep talk show, let me go over there and find some great Cherokee uh, 2014 through 2016 Cherokee information. I got some bad news for you. Uh, there's no real lifting of the newest Cherokee. No. So you're kind of going to be stuck with that tennis shoe looking thing uh, that you're driving around. I hear they're, uh, they're really great if they're not having to replace the, uh, the nine speed automatic transmissions or the engines. Uh, yeah. But, uh, or uh, gosh, what was it? Uh, was that a renegade? I can't remember. Somebody had a, a air conditioning problem. Uh, it was the renegade that they had a problem with. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. hope you don't have any problems with it and all the best. All righty. So great voicemails. Thank you very much for uh, calling in and uh, playing our little voicemail game. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? What are you talking about, man? Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? I got no idea what the heck. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Get out of my face, yo. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Underwater. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? In the bubble bath. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? No clue. And where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? While flexing on stumps. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? I would assume on the radio. The Jeep Talk Show, available on iTunes and at jeeptalkshow.com. Did you get that echo by putting your head in the toilet? That was a good echo. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. I'm busy. Um, so anyway, we'd like for you guys to call in and uh, tell us where you listen to the Jeep Talk Show. Just uh, call our uh, voicemail, 530-675-4102, or go over to jeeptalkshow.com and click the little vertical horizontal thingamabob that says uh, send questions slash comments and let us know where you listen to the Jeep Talk Show. We really, really want to know. Honestly, we want to do another promo like that one, but with some new uh, where you listen to. So uh, please uh, give us a call and let us know. Yep. And uh, if we decide to use yours, you guys are going to get a chance to win absolutely nothing. Uh-huh. No, in fact, uh, I'm looking forward to this spring and this summer when I get a chance to uh, get back into the swing of the of the off-road show season out here in the Northwest. Uh, we're still a couple few months away from all that happening. But once it does get into full swing, you're going to see this crazy guy uh, showing up in front of everybody's face, throwing a mic in there and be like, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? And uh, we're going to get a lot more promos and stuff. So, guys, um, if you're not going to be out here in my neck of the woods uh, out for show season and you guys want to get in on the next promo that we do uh, talking about where you guys listen to the Jeep Talk Show at, well, get those uh, emails or those rather those voicemails in. Uh, and let us know where you guys are listening to the Jeep Talk Show at. Cards and another thing and we want you guys to uh, to be a part of is our YouTube channel. We're adding new content all the time, and we are definitely encouraging you guys to tell a friend and make sure you guys are subscribing. Uh, if you have subscribed to our previous channel, the XJ Talk Show, we encourage you guys to head over to our YouTube channel now, which is youtube.com slash Jeep Talk Show, and uh, get that subscription in and make sure you guys are spreading the word. Getting new, uh, uh, new uh, not reviews, uh, subscribers to the YouTube channel all the time. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I forgot about it. I didn't include it in our, uh, our reviews, but we actually got one saying uh, a comment on one of uh, our most recent uh, shows. Uh, can anybody give me uh, a link to a good Jeep show? This thing is worse than listening to NPR. No. <laughs> And now they were talking about the video and I, you know, yeah. I, I just can't see sitting for an hour and a half, two hours sometimes watching, you know, uh, three knuckleheads. Sorry, Tammy. Uh, you know what you were getting into three knuckleheads talking about Jeeps. Yeah. Uh, Cause it's, there's nothing flashy here. It's just, you know, us talking. So, uh, I, he, I was surprised to see, um, what's that show that's on where the DJs sit around and talk about stuff. It comes on late at night. Um, uh, I completely lost it. It's not TMZ. It's uh, where they, they actually have the boom microphones and they sit and they discuss. It's like two or three groups of DJs that are talking, but it's a video sh- a video program. I thought it was just insane. Why in the world would anybody want to 
watch uh, DJs talking. You know, it, it's a it's an audio medium. So it's kind of the same thing here. Uh, so if you're uh, going over there to YouTube and watching our shows, uh, you know, God bless you if that's what you want to do. There's absolutely no 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 problem with that. But really, listen to the audio only. Uh, driving back and forth to work. Uh, mowing the grass, going to the gym, whatever, and I think you'll uh, find it a lot more pleasurable and probably will go a lot faster, too. Yeah. And now our favorite time, something we all look forward to each and every week, and that's hearing from the mind of Nikki G. From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G, and uh, I keep thinking about the guy that commented on Tammy's YouTube video of her driving her Jeep in the snow and said that uh, the only reason why she lists she has so many views is because she's a woman driver. That is ridiculous. Everybody knows men do not use the internet to look at women. <laughs> it's a myth. That's right, Wendy. If you're listening, and that's the right. The second thing I want to talk about is uh, you know, my so I had to change the alternator on my Jeep a couple of weeks ago, and I had a hard time getting that thing out. And oh, yeah. I tried to get it out through the bottom; it wouldn't fit. When I tried to take it out through the top; I had to take the battery tray out and yeah. uh, loosen my fan shroud and try to wiggle it out. And it finally squeezed out of there with a whole lot of butter on it. Mm. And uh, so my question is is why do they call it a chicken pot pie when there's obviously no pot involved at all? Unless they're <laughs> considering that little aluminum cup to be a pot, which it's more like a tray. I don't even think they make it out of aluminum anymore. I think it's cardboard. Yeah, it's something to think about. All right, guys, I'll uh, chat at you later. Have a good one. Bye. In, in the 60s, uh, marijuana became very popular. And about the same time, so did the 35 cents, 35 cent chicken pot pies or our chicken pies as they were known before the sixties. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some groovy pot pies, man. Uh, heat me up 34 of those babies. Um, yeah, you know, it's interesting in my 98, the, uh, the alternator does come out through the bottom. Uh, I can't remember which way I took mine out. I want to say I tried taking mine out through the bottom, and then I ended up taking uh, taking it out through the top. I, I honestly I don't remember. It was uh, a while back since I've uh, swapped it out, and I haven't had to do an alternator swap on a Jeep in quite a while. So, oh, that's good. Uh, that's actually mm-hmm. really good. Where where does yours come out, Tammy? I'm sorry. I'm reading about <laughs> chicken pot pies and where the name came from, so I can let. <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually here. <laughs> anyway, moving right along. No, it, go it ahead. Comes, no, they, no, I need used, to know now. Yeah, where, I do. Where did, where way, did chicken way, pot way pies back come from? In where did, Pennsylvania I, Dutch. Inquiring minds need to know. Yeah, Pennsylvania Dutch, which is actually up where I go off-roading. Um, in that region, that they used to make a dish called Bot Boy. It's Deutsch speaking. And it's anyway, it's the Pennsylvania Dutch pot pie. It's a stew with no pastry, and that's where it came from. They made it in, you know, big pots. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know. Wikipedia says. I don't know. Everything's better with pastry. Oh, yes. I don't know about you guys, but to me, a chicken pot pie is only, it's, I I, I won't say edible. It's best if it's totally encased in pastry. Yes. Yes. I don't want just a topping. I want a, uh, something that cradles it and something that covers it. You know, uh, it's like a pie. You know, like a like a, a peach pie or apple pie or whatever. Because I want I want a lot of crust. So, um, no idea why I have a weight problem. Anyway, let's uh, get over to our next Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G. And uh, don't have anything cheap related, but uh, I will share with you what I did yesterday with Wendy when we're out. Shopping in a thrift store. We like to go to thrift stores mainly because she likes to find old antiques and other worn out mm-hmm. stuff. And uh, I'm just a cheap <laughs> bastard. Yeah, they had a like a little electronic display of some alarm clocks, and I went and I set all the times to the correct time because it bothered me that every that all three clocks had the wrong time or had a different <laughs> time. And I went ahead and set the alarm for 15 minutes oh, on all three of them. And then I walked away. 
And I'm on the other end of the store with Wendy when uh, all the alarms went off. And she just looked at me and said, really, of all the men in the world, why did it have to be you? <laughs> yeah, that's what I got to live with. That's what she said. Unappreciated. <laughs> all right, guys and girls, I will chat you later. You have a good one. Bye. <laughs> I knew I instantly when he said he started setting the clock, I knew exactly where that was going. <laughs> The uh, <laughs> the funny thing is, is I've done the same thing. <laughs> the sad thing is, is that she didn't even hesitate. She knew exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> her head at probably him. snapped like, so fast. <laughs> oh, that's great. Good times, Nikki G. Thanks for sharing. Yes, <laughs> it's awesome. Absolutely. So here's something that uh, I always enjoy seeing come in. Uh, I actually get to see these things first, and I share it with the guys uh, usually during the week, or at least by showtime. Uh, reviews and uh, we have uh, two or three this week uh, that we can uh, share with you guys yeah we uh, encourage you guys to leave us five star reviews and of course drop us a little comment as well let us know what you think about the show constructive criticism is always welcome of course if you guys just want to give us a little shout out a little pat on the back we encourage that as well of course we are on itunes stitcher review obviously youtube like we said uh, uh stitcher radio rather um, YouTube, and uh, well, what's another one? We're, we're all over the place. Anyways, wherever you guys can find us, make sure you guys um, uh, get us a review and a comment. We will always read those comments on the air. We've got some here now from iTunes. Uh, this one comes in from Angry Math Student. I've been there, <laughs> I tell you what. February 9th uh, calls us both funny and interesting. Give You'd us a five-star review. <laughs> Just recently found this podcast, but I'm already thoroughly enjoying it. You guys own a Jeep or just like Jeeps in general, you will love this show. And that is the truth right there. Uh, Angry Math Student is speaking gospel. And we, uh, we thank you very much for, uh, for leaving, this, uh, leaving us that review. And, uh, you know, hey, uh, sneak that calculator into that test next time. You won't be so angry. And another one from iTunes. This one is titled Best v- Vehicular Podcast. Kind of messed me up there. From Mole Gator. On February 8th, and it's another five-star rating, I've listened since episode one. This podcast gets one star because it exists, another star because it's Jeep-related, another star because the audio quality and format (laughs) are excellent, and the addition of Tammy and Josh are worth a star, and the final star (laughs) I'm able to give belongs to the Grand Adventure segment. Yep, he will make me spend yet more money. I will have... I would have given more stars, but it wouldn't let me. The companion site XJ Talk gets 10 stars. Hey, right on. So was it just me or did everybody else notice that Tony wasn't mentioned? Yeah, Tony wasn't <laughs> mentioned and, I, and I, I only get a half a star. Uh, I'm only, it takes, it takes to two of us star, to get Josh. one full star. So Yeah, but at least you got one. At least you got yeah, half yeah. of one. And then we're going to round, uh, round this up with uh, a, a, a nice message that uh, we received on Twitter at, uh, at Jeep Talk Show on the Twitter. It is from Church Turtle. Not, not exactly sure what a church turtle would be, but uh, hmm. sounds like it's a great place to take a nap while you're uh, in church. Uh, just a quick note saying I really enjoy the show. I gave you a thumbs up on the YouTube I love the use of the before the social media sites. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much, Church Turtle. And we promise that we won't turn you over. <laughs> and just leave you there for the buzzer. half a beat there. <laughs> well, that's one thing. Plus, you know, Turtle would flip over and you just, ee, <laughs> ee. <laughs> You know, uh, interesting thing. No offense, Church Turtle, but I saw a uh, operation that was done on a, uh, I guess it was a box turtle. Uh, She was pregnant, and she was unable to pass her eggs. So they used what looked like a Dremel tool to cut open the bottom part of the shell, a nice square section, remove that square section, remove the egg or eggs. I don't know how many. uh, uh, It was a large egg, actually. And then uh, put that square piece back and then uh, epoxy the hell out of it. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) <laughs> so she uh, uh, she was able to uh, bear her offspring and uh, continue living in the process. But uh, very interesting. All kinds of interesting things on the internet, isn't it? Uh, I don't see how regular TV, broadcast TV is going to survive, frankly. It's not. All right. Well, let's talk about 
Wrangler talk uh, or XJ talk. I think I'm going to talk about both this week because we don't, uh, you know, I did find a great post about uh, all over on wranglertalk.com. Uh, somebody had a afraid uh, synthetic winch rope and uh, it was frayed about a foot from uh, the eyelet. So instead of replacing the whole 80 or 100 feet of that synthetic uh, winch line, they were going to try to repair it. And they took time to post up on wranglertalk.com and going through the process of what they did to repair that frayed line. Now, I would assume if it's a foot from the end, you just cut it and uh, loop it through. And now you've got, you know, 99 feet of, uh, of winch rope. But <laughs> you need to go over there to wranglertalk.com and look for, just do a search on synthetic rope and uh, read that. But anyway, it was rather a long, detailed post, which we absolutely love on the forums because that's what people like to see. They want to know how to do things whenever they run into this problem, or maybe they never will, but they still like to know know, how you would go about fixing it. So, uh, and you'll see lots of those types, lots of those type of posts over at wranglertalk.com and xjtalk.com. Now, you might think that we're going to be very draconian about, hey, this is the Wrangler Talk dot site. There's no Jeep posts here about uh, Jeep Cherokees or Trailhawks or Renegades. No, we don't care. If you got something to post, even if it's not Jeep related, uh, feel free to go to Wrangler Talk or XJTalk.com and post on either site. Uh, fun, friendly sites, uh, mm-hmm. no flaming. Uh, and if, if, you, if you don't know what that means, uh, you've never been to a forum apparently. <laughs> whenever you post something and people say, oh, that's been asked a thousand times before. How dare you? Uh, you know, Google is your friend and all these things that make absolutely no sense to me. Why anybody would be territorial about a forum. We don't do that on those sites. So if you've had bad, um, eh, bad situations on the forums, uh, before, well, come over to wranglertalk.com and xjtalk.com and post your question. Uh, you don't have to apologize for it. You don't have to apologize and say, I'm sure this has been asked a thousand times before. We're not going to go there. All we're going to do is try to help you and uh, have some fun in the process. And it won't be uh, at your expense. No. (laughs) So join us. We get to know you first. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and (laughs) and it's, it's good natured ribbing too. It's not, uh, not, Hey, dumbass type thing that you see. And it it still boggles my mind that actually uh, you actually see moderators uh, doing that to to members on a, uh, on a, a forum. But uh, just join us over at wranglertalk.com or xjtalk.com. Okie dokie. So now it's time to do some uh, Jeep Mama stuff, her uh, weekly segment of Wrangler Talk. Shut up and listen. Shut up. So shut up. You don't shut up. Shut up, Shane. Hey. (laughs) Shut up and listen. It's time for Wrangler Talk. It's time for Jeep Mama. So um, just I got an email earlier today, and I just wanted to, uh, to bring this up. Um, last week, I talked about how, in my opinion, that I felt like my Rubicon is not a typical stock Wrangler, and I listed all these reasons why you know a Rubicon is kind of like your modified Wrangler, um, even, the, even if it's um, just off the lot. But anyway, we ta- I talked about how I have the 410 axle ratio, Anyway, the emailer said, I just finished listening to the latest episode of the Jeep Talk Show. During the conversation about stock Jeeps, you mentioned that the Rubicon has the 4 to 1 transfer case and the 410 gear ratio in the differential. Did you know that on the 2015 Rubicon with the automatic transmission that the standard gearing was 373 ratio and that the 410 ratio was an option costing an additional $595? Just curious whether you still have your window stickers showing what your Rubicon came with. Well, yep, I have my window sticker, and I was curious, and I'm like, oh, God, maybe I made a mistake. And But I did look, and mine is the 410 axle ratio, and I actually got a deal on mine because mine was only $545. So anyway, just wanted to let you know that, yes, the optional equipment on the 2015 um, Rubicon's you can add the 410 axle ratio, and mine happen to have that. So anyway, just wanted to, to bring that up. Um, my Wrangler Talk kind of ties into what we were talking earlier, what Tony was mentioning earlier on Wrangler Talk, about Wrangler Talk and xjtalk.com, and even before that segment, we were doing the reviews. So it kind of ties into what I'm going to talk about tonight. And 
I titled it, Along with the Good Comes the Bad. And putting yourself out there on social media can be a really dicey thing. There are so many bullies and trolls lurking every corner. But I need to remember that with every bad comment or bad person, there are tons more good. And that's what keeps me going with my blog and posting stuff on social media. Back about, I think it was two weeks ago, I posted three videos of my Jeep trying to tackle the over two feet of snow on the street in front of my house after our big snowstorm. Anyway, the first video has over 18,000 views in just two weeks. That's about 1,000 views a day, which is so awesome. But there are only 31 thumbs up, and unfortunately on that video, there are 37 thumbs down. And that's the video where I just kind of got stuck in the Jeep and my husband's laughing at me. Um, anyway, the third video has just over 7,000 views, and that one has 41 thumbs up, but five thumbs down. So yay me. But anyway, there are lots of comments on most of them are nice and they're constructive. Um, some of them are just downright mean. And one of the guys <laughs> mentions the only reason, and Nikki G mentioned this earlier, because I think I brought this up earlier, that the only reason I have views is because I'm a woman driver and I can't even drive a Jeep. That's what he said. And another guy posted, stay home till you learn how to drive. Pathetic waste of equipment. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, I, um, I kind of failed on this and I should have known better, but I told him to go check out my other videos. Then I proceeded to tell him to bite me. <laughs> um, I know, I know. Yeah. I need to ignore those kinds of comments, but sometimes I just, you know, I just can't help it. Anyway, I just wanted to say a big thank you to all the folks out there who have been kind and constructive. A big thank you. I'm still just a beginner in all of this whole Jeep thing, and I'm still learning. But actually, I'm not in the snow. I have driven, grow, I grew up driving in the snow, and I could probably drive circles around most everyone. But trying to push it in two feet of snow, it, you know, it wasn't worth it for me. That's my daily driver. And we were asked to stay off the streets, so I was just trying to be respectful of the snow plows, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, I just want to say I appreciate all the comments and questions and I just need to learn not to take the negative one so personally. And I'm getting really good, better at that. But I also want to say that the comments actually spark some great ideas for my blog, for my Jeep, and for this podcast. So please keep them coming. And one person um, who I've been emailing back and forth with actually gave me an idea for my latest blog post, which I now have a page on my blog, and it's called A Bucket List for My Jeep. And he was commenting on how I have a personal bucket list and he doesn't, but he has a bucket list for his Jeep. And I'm like, wow, that's a really good idea. So yeah. now my Jeep has a bucket list and it's kind of a wish list and it's in, this is in no particular order. So I started making my list and I, uh, the first items are the Jeep trail badge for Roush Creek trail number 11 and Crawler's Ridge. And the next is an EVAP canister skid plate, armored diff covers in purple, fender flares, 35-inch tires and wheels, a winch, Clayton entry level lift kit. And I'm also now looking at the metal cloak lifts because I hear those are pretty pretty rad oh or my beast God. mode. Clayton's going to disown you. I know. <laughs> um, but he, he, just don't tell him. <laughs> exhaust exhaust spacers because now I've after I've been doing some research I hear that once you get these lifts on the Wranglers you need to get some exhaust spacers shocks of course armored gas tank skid plate two more Raxium LED lights and purple air vent covers and I am going to this weekend download and I'm not I'm going to say this wrong I know the Clinometer app. So anyway, a big thanks to all those people out there with the nice comments, the great advice, and the constructive criticism. Just try not to be so mean. Anyway. So uh, you uh, had time to go find this. I mentioned the uh, the negative comment that we got on one of our YouTube videos. It was actually for episode 213. It was uh, from Wes Brash, and he certainly is. Does anyone know of a more interesting Jeep talk show? Uh, this makes NPR sound exciting. <laughs> well, I'm going to go find it and tell him to bite me too. <laughs> so le let this be a, a lesson to you, Tammy. Uh, I don't know that this is, this is the right way of doing it, but this is what I did. I said, uh, I, I told him, uh, replied directly uh, to him, Wes, bite me. No, I actually said, yeah. we're, we're trying. Is there anything you can suggest that would make it better? Uh, have you tried the four by four podcast? 
And uh, so I answered his question by giving him another uh, podcast to listen to that he might, might you know, better fit what uh, he thinks a, a Jeep talk show should be. And uh, also, too, I just wanted some sort of uh, constructive criticism that Josh and I have been talking about for many years now uh, that we, uh, we understand it. it may not be your cup of tea. You may not like certain things. We got some feedback that we weren't getting, having enough tech on the show, and we've tried to address that. Hopefully that is uh, uh, making those, those folks that uh, want more tech uh, happier with the show. Uh, I mean, after all, we're here because of you guys, not because of ourselves. I mean, uh, we could get on here and just, just chat and... Uh, put it out as a podcast where we're trying to give you the show that you want. Uh, so uh, basically I didn't attack him back. I just tried to ask for some, some feedback and uh, you know what his response was? Mm. Nothing. Well, wow. so either he hasn't read it, even though this was uh, six days ago right. uh, or the point was to hurt somebody's feelings. Well, I just went to the YouTube his, his, he must have deleted it because it's not there. Mm. But there's one on there that says, best to keep Snowcat in garage next year. Well, well, you know, I was talking about our episode 213, not on your. No, no, no. The guy that, I'm sorry. Oh, the okay. The guy who made the mean comment on mine. Uh, he, he's probably listening to the show live and went, oh, crap, and went over there and deleted it. <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah. Well, hey, uh, speaking of responses, uh, I, I meant to get this into the show notes, but uh, it oh, I'm sorry. I, I, if it's I not in the show notes, yeah. we're not doing it. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, have a, uh, we have actually have a response to uh, one of the stories from This Week in Jeep. And uh, it comes from uh, a U.S. Army veteran uh, who's also a fan of the show. I want to thank him for his service first and foremost. Uh, Nathan Weaver says, hey, guys, Nathan here. Just uh, so I know you guys were talking about the Hendrick Commando in the U.S. Uh, in the US Army, I just wanted to add a little bit on it. I served six years in the Army as a CAV recon scout, and I did see the Jeep out there during deployment. I don't know if it was the commando, but I do know that Hendrick isn't the only one contracting Jeeps for the Army. You guys really need to check out the company Jankel. They build a Jeep called the Pegasus. I do believe they are the company that won major contracts for the Army. They are a bit more capable than the commando. Anyways, just wanted to throw that out there. Keep up the good work. And I did have a chance to check out that Jankel, and oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, uh, just do a quick Google image search for Jankel Jeep and uh, let, the, um, let the drooling begin. You know, you enjoy that way too much, I could tell. Uh, you actually might need to wear a pair of Depends for another reason. <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> don't ask me to stand up right now. All right, well, let's, uh, let's get over to cool Jeep stuff. And uh, Tammy came through uh, as a, the trooper that she is and uh, came up with something uh, – good to tell us about what do you got uh, to tell us about for cool jeep stuff timmy well this is something if you're a wrangler owner um, and you have a soft top that you never want to leave home without and it's a soft top window roll-up storage now they have several of these different kind of storages for your vinyl windows but the roll-up kind are the best because those you can just snap on to your roll bars and it's there um when you need it, when it starts raining. And, you know, some of us don't care when it rains if our Jeep gets wet, but, you know, some of us do. Anyway, there's many different kinds. And the one that I found um, that I liked, you can get it on Amazon, and it's the best top, and it's the charcoal window storage duffel, and it's about $73. Anyway, it's layered um, oh, fabric separators, that you put each window in and then you can roll it up. So it fits all the best top and factory original zip out windows, plus most aftermarket soft top windows. It's a non-abrasive fabric and with the inner cloth separators, like I said, they keep the window panels separated because you don't want them to scratch, mm -hmm. the zippers to scratch right. the vinyl windows. And it's a nylon fabric is strong, weather resistant, it accommodates the soft top windows and panels, plus the rear, the longer rear window panel. And it includes st securing straps for the inside and out. And sometimes certain kinds, you can snap them around your roll bars and it will just lay on top of your soft top when you um, put your soft top down. And it just sits right there and it doesn't get in your way. So it's there with you when you go out on the beach or off-roading, wherever you need to go. And it makes a handy little thing for somebody to steal your uh, panels. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All in one grab. Uh, I'm, no. I, I was always kind of concerned uh, on the, the couple of occasions that uh, Susie and I took the TJ out. 
uh, we would uh, drive down the highway with all the panels and stuff on. And then w- when we got to where we were going, I think we were going to Kima, which is down towards Galveston. And uh, it was like, well, you know, it's warm. Let's take the, the, the sides off and uh, drive around, uh, you know, at 30, 40 miles an hour, which is great to have that open air feel and look around, especially when you're there at the water. And um, the, concern, uh, the concern we both had was uh, once we get back on the highway, what's going to keep these windows from flying out? Because it is very windy in a Jeep uh, when you're driving 70 miles an hour. Uh, and uh, I just kept them down low. But, you know, there's going to be motion and all kinds of things because of the air moving through the Jeep. So uh, this thing sounds like it'd be a great, great deal to have, uh, especially and with those separators. Have, yeah, yeah, and you don't have to put them on, you know, snap them on the roll bars or whatever. You can just set them, you know, on the back seat or on the floor. Mm-hmm. Um, cause they roll up really nice and neat and best top stuff is very nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some of the best actually very, very well made and, uh, definitely going to last, uh, last for a while. Now I got something that did, uh, also for the Jeep top of sorts. Um, this is something that I've kind of been looking at for a, a long time. Something that I've, I've always been a fan of, uh, for, for the Wranglers. And this is, this goes for the TJs, the YJs, or even the JKs. And, uh, and although this one is only for the JK system, this is the Smitty built 581035 Black Diamond CRES cargo restraint system with trail cargo net. Now, this system runs you about 120 bucks, and it is available on Amazon.com. We encourage you guys always to uh, check out our uh, Amazon link. Just head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon, I think is how it works. Uh, and uh, anyways, uh, this is made out of marine grade fabric uh, with heat sealed seams uh, and a UV stable material. No drill installation. That means it's basically all just um, strap or snap on. And it will work with uh, standard and extended tops. So it doesn't matter which JK version you've got. This will definitely transform the look of your Jeep. And this is the ultimate summertime system, really. You take the top off, you throw this thing on, and it's going to completely transform the look of your Jeep. And f- me personally... I love how this transforms the look of a Jeep. Excellent. Well, we hope you guys enjoy uh, uh, the cool Jeep stuff, and uh, we'll have more of that in uh, upcoming weeks. So, Josh, we didn't have a Tech Talk uh, this uh, this week. What's up with no, that? No, we don't have a Tech Talk this week. Uh, I kind of mentioned uh, before the show aired, uh, off the air, that we, um, well, during our pre-show at least, uh, I've had a, a really full plate lately. Not only am I trying to get a business up and going, um, we've had uh, had some issues here in the family recently, had a death uh, close to the family. Uh, not to mention it is like flu season, like gangbusters around here. Uh, I'm fighting off a second bug. I just got over one, uh, fighting off another and uh, everybody in my house and office are both all sick. So are all I sick. So I, I've got it coming from all fronts, guys. And I personally it's, it's think m- it's a great idea to take a vacation and go off road someplace far, far away from anybody yeah, else. Right. Well, uh, <laughs> we'll get we'll get into why I'm not going to be doing that for a little bit oh, still no. uh, okay. here in just a little bit. But no, I want to let you guys know that um, that Tech Talk is something that that I take pride in doing with and providing for you guys each and every week. And uh, I want to encourage you guys to continue to help us out. Help the show out by submitting questions for Tech Talk. If you've got a question that is tech related, something that is scratching your head, maybe you uh, are uncertain about a direction that you want to take technically with your Jeep as far as uh, something to look out for when you're doing this part of this build or you know something like that, let us know. No question too hard. No question. There's no such thing as a stupid question. So by all means, get those questions in. You can email them to info at jeeptalkshow.com or you guys can always give us a call 530-675-4102 and just leave a brief message outlining your question and uh, and we'll of course be uh, be able to answer that here on the show so next week guys um, tune in make sure you download next week's episode i will have a lot of tech for you uh, in that show also too uh, josh didn't mention it but he has a lot of experience with uh, stereo stereo installations uh, uh, woofers and sub blah blah blahs so if you've got an electronics uh, question that's uh, i don't want to say less manly but nothing that's uh, horsepower <laughs> and torque ratios and gears uh, you know if you've got a stereo type question uh, you know shoot it out there uh, also too uh, relays uh, how to hook up a, a 50 inch uh, light bar uh, to, uh, to my, uh, to my Jeep and do I just plug it in the cigarette lighter or do I actually run it to the battery? And what's this relay thing I've heard about, you know? So, uh, those, uh, those questions are certainly well within the, uh, the realm of tech talk. 
Absolutely, guys. Uh, just give you a, a little bit of background on that. I do hold a first class MECP certification, mobile electronic certification program. It is a nationally recognized program. I spent uh, nearly a decade in the automotive electronics industry. Uh, so I, I know my stuff, <laughs> needless to say. In fact, uh, actually, last night I spent a little bit of time uh, doing a full bench test on an amplifier and subsystem for a coworker. Uh, I was looking to do some upgrades on his car. So uh, yeah, guys, anything electrical related, throw it at me. I uh, encourage the challenge, actually. So is it still cold enough for a campfire where you guys are? It hits like, oh like 75 God, yes. today. No, 75? It was like, 75. Ah. It was 25 with the wind chill of less than that here. It was freezing. I'm somewhere in the middle. It wasn't 25. It certainly wasn't 75. I don't know if we hit 50, though. Have you have you guys been seeing, uh, well, actually, Josh, have you been seeing swings in temperature where it's warm and cold, warm and cold, or has it just been cold? No. Nah, I mean, it's the Northwest, uh, and so you don't like the weather? Just wait five minutes. Okay. Uh, it'll change. All right. uh, so, well, I thought, you know, the, we, is, I thought maybe the shifting temperatures might be giving you a hard time. Even even the stomach bug, can those things can occur. Well, um, 30 or 40 degree temperature swings is not uncommon oh. uh, up here. So, I mean, in the course of, you know, 12 hours, the temp can literally swing 20, 30 degrees or more. So uh, it's, it, uh, you know, it doesn't happen every single day. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, uh, during seasonal changes, yeah, there, there are some shifts and stuff. But uh, generally, they're not, they're not quite as violent or severe a, as that. Uh, it's been pretty mild for the most part lately. Mm -hmm. uh, we have had a couple little cold snaps, uh, and of course, we had a, an ice storm a few weeks back. But, um, but all in all, it's, it's been a relatively mild winter. So uh, I uh, went outside. If you guys haven't been keeping up, I uh, was, uh, was working at a, a, a position as a systems and networking uh, administrator, and uh, the company kind of fell on hard times. It's a single owner business, a large company. Uh, they did about 80 mil a year. So it's not like it was a, a mom and pop thing uh, or, you know, like a million dollar a year company or something. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, it fell on hard times and they had to lay me off. So uh, I have not had a reason to start my Jeep. So I probably last started my Jeep over a week ago. And uh, I went out there to, uh, I was actually replacing a side mirror on uh, my daughter's 2003 Honda. And I was getting some tools and I heard this uh, click, 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 click. And it actually sounded like it was coming from, I don't know what it was, but it actually sounded like it was coming from uh, the uh, uh, fuel pump on my Cherokee. And I went, you know, I haven't started this thing in a while, but the battery's low. And uh, tried starting it and it was a, oh, oh. Click, 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 oh, click, 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 click. Yeah. So I threw the uh, the charger on it for uh, uh, probably 30 minutes or 40 minutes, uh, low charge rate, about two amps uh, per, I don't know, hour or whatever the rate is. Mm -hmm. And uh, went out there and cranked it and ran it for a little bit and uh, charged that battery back up. It didn't take it didn't take much. It's not like it's got a bad battery. It just, uh, when, you, when it, the vehicle sits, if you've got an alarm system uh, or any other goodies uh, that are... Uh, voltage vampires like i've got the uh, the dash cam i also have uh, a little uh, uh that uh, tm1 temperature monitoring thing that i put on my uh, oh, yeah. my jeep so that i could monitor the true temperature of the uh, of the engine uh and uh, it has a uh, lcd display and a led big backlight that is always on if it's plugged in it's on in fact i should have unplugged that thing when i got done starting the jeep this 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 uh this morning but anyway, my point to this is, is that <clears throat> if you don't, if you don't run your Jeep, if you don't start it and let it run for a few minutes, uh, every three to five days, you might want to start looking for all those voltage vampires that are plugged into your electrical system. And, uh, there probably won't be a lot you can do about the, the alarm system. And, and you may not want to disconnect that anyway, uh, if it's sitting out in the yard, um, or in the driveway. But uh, keep that in mind because you might get into a situation where you, uh, you know, uh, hellfire and damnation comes down from the weather and you go, oh, I've got my Jeep. I can go anywhere. And click, 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 click. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, there's also trickle charging uh, that you could do. But I, I, I'm kind of, I don't really care for that. I've never really done it, but it always kind of concerns mm. me to have something electrical charging something constantly. 
uh, especially mm, no. in, in an attached garage. So it's I'm, I'm going to go ahead preference. and chime in on that. Uh, battery tenders are are awesome. Uh, they are very safe to use. They they are a, a great little addition to have if you have a motorcycle uh, or if you oh, yeah. uh, if your Jeep is a weekend warrior, kind of like mine, where it might sit for a while without being started. Uh, get yourself a battery tender. Th- those things are relatively inexpensive. Uh, you can pick them up on eBay for next to nothing, probably. Uh, and uh, and they are just set it and forget it. And literally, they just put a small, tiny little, and we're talking, you know, milliamps, um, less than two amps for sure. Uh, chart. And it all depends on the model that you get, obviously. Right. Um, so and, so and you said just, Tinder. Tinder reminds me of how you start fires, which is my concern. No, no, not, not the- Tinder. Uh, <laughs> Ten, like, you know, I'm I'm going I'm going to uh, tend to this task at hand. Oh, okay, uh, good. Battery tender. It's you, just, did you it's see a, my fear? Battery tender is a, is a name brand. There are other brands out there that do the same thing. But I've got a battery tender right now that's been on my motorcycle battery for the better part of a couple of years. Uh, it's been a while since I've it's, I've had any seat time. So uh, I want to make sure that that battery that I got is going to is going to stay well uh, stay well and charged. So when I do throw it back in the bike. Uh, it's going to start up for me first time. Same yeah. thing with your Jeep battery. If you're if you know your Jeep is going to be sitting for a couple weeks or or more, good idea to have a trickle charger on it, as it will help keep that voltage up, and uh, and it will obviously be very beneficial for your battery. Well, let me play uh, the Jeep Tech uh, intro because uh, then we can go through all this again. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's this kind of stuff, guys. It's just, it's, you know, from the hip, we, you know, just uh, answer a tech question right off the bat, just like that, just in conversation. That's the kind of stuff we're talking about, guys. Just call those questions in and, and we'd be happy to talk about it just like this uh, live on the air. So, Josh, I was, <clears throat> I had to actually stop myself because I came just mere millimeters from asking you what's going on with a Jeep. And I went, up, oh, no, nope, wait, it's coming. Wait, it'll, it's coming. It'll come yeah, up in uh, Campfireside Chat. So, Josh, tell us what's going on with your Jeep. So I was planning on finishing things up on Saturday. Um, woke up uh, a little bit later than I wanted to, uh, not feeling very well at all um, under the weather. Uh, and uh, my uh, stepson was planning on coming over that morning as well. Had a couple of things he needed to take care of as we're going to be getting him into the electrician's union here uh, coming up. He just actually just got accepted and uh, has a whole ton of hoops to jump through uh, to, to get in. So he needed some help with that. And... Needed some help with his taxes. So I spent the better part of the day doing his, mine, and uh, everybody's taxes. So yeah, uh, sat- yeah Saturday was, um, of course, uh, uh, was all that. And then Sunday, rather, of course, was was Super Bowl. And I was... Uh, oh, priorities. Any the priorities that. were not in order. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not in order at all. <laughs> so, no, I wanted to eat some gourmet food, uh, drink some adult beverages, and, and watch the game on a 104-inch projection TV with Atmos surround sound. And I did just that and enjoyed every minute of it. So you haven't uh, tried starting it yet? No, I, I actually still have the starter to put back in. Uh, so that's, it's really, it comes down to that, guys. Uh, oh, good. So we, we are on the home stretch. Uh, and it, it's nice to, to walk out of the garage and, and see the hood of the Jeep open and things put back together. <laughs> well, <laughs> and not, not have, you know, all this stuff parts grouped laying over all the over fenders the place. and yeah, parts everywhere and, and all that stuff. So uh, yeah, the, the light is at the end of the tunnel. I'm very close. So. I, I am hoping uh, that uh, by uh, by this time next week, as we re- record this show uh, for episode two sixteen, I will have some uh, some news, some audio, and some video to share with you guys about uh, the Jeep starting up. So, if uh, Yosemite uh, blows or uh, one of the local uh, mountains in the uh, yeah Yosemite, Yosemite. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you were saying. If it blows, you'll oh, actually no. be able to uh, <laughs> jump out there, throw the, uh, <laughs> the the starter in. And then realize that it's not going to run and you can take the Honda. <laughs> it's fast. Uh, funny, it's funny thing about my Honda. I came, I came out to, uh, came out to it. Was it Wednesday, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday? And, uh, of last week. And I, I forgot to mention this on the show last week, but I, I came out and, uh, it was gone. uh, no, no, the Honda was there <laughs> still. Um, but the, uh, the alarm lets me know if it has been tampered with. Right. Uh, and oh, as wow. I disarmed the alarm, uh, it gave me more chirps, beeps, and flashes than it was supposed to, uh, and so I, some something throughout the night. I've been seeing a lot of paw prints on my car lately, so most likely it was a raccoon, yeah. or a possum, or a, or a stray kitty somewhere. Gotcha. Yep. Uh, so lots of fun. And if you guys uh, don't know, I don't know what episodes they were, but uh, it, it's a while back. Uh, Josh back actually had fifties, I think. Yeah. yeah. Josh had his uh, his Honda stolen not once but twice. <laughs> 
So, Twice in five and a half months. Yeah, so that's uh, kind of, that's kind of the joke. Uh, that uh, is it an accord? It is an accord. It's a '96 yep. accord. It is the most stolen Popular, accord yep. on the planet. And and when he says the most, not not in general, that specific no, his, car, his that specific, specific car. Yeah. <laughs> yes. No. I just leave the key in the door for now. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's the simpler with the, with the big sign. Take yeah. me. Text me at this number to let me know where it is when you're done taking the tires. Uh, exactly. So, Tammy, what's going on with you? Well, today I noticed that I didn't put my soft top all the way back on. Uh-oh. Um, you know where you, you pull it down and it flips under yeah. on the yeah. back? Yeah. Anyway, it's too dang cold for me to fix it, so I'm just going to leave it until it warms up. Word rail malfunction. That's what I was yeah. trying to think of. <laughs> um, and um, I just added a new item to my Jeep bucket list, thanks to Josh. Oh, you saw that, did you? You yes, saw the pictures and was like, ooh, that really that looks cool. That is looking. I like that. <laughs> and it's funny because we saw um, a tire, spare tire carrier cover, and it was a Batman, the Batman sign. And it was a big, bright yellow sign. I'm like, ooh, that would be cool and purple. And my husband's like, oh, we could get you that for Mother's Day. And I'm like, no. Mm, that's too um, long I got to leave my tire, my spare tire, you know, <laughs> naked. Yes. Anyway, so now I think I'm going to send him a little clip, uh, a little link to that cargo net. Maybe I'll get there that for go. Mother's Day. Um, and just one other thing that I've, I've found um, – group to wheel with in March. So I think I'm going to go up to Roush Creek in March. I want to get up there. Is this a group you can talk about? Give them a little shout out. um, It's the blue mountain Jeep Alliance, which I am. Okay. Very good. Yeah. They do a monthly trail rides at Roush Creek. I would actually like to get up there sooner, but my son plays basketball on the weekends. So well, that's his problem. Yeah. (laughs) Family, (laughs) family, family first. Um, You can find your own ride. (laughs) <laughs> but I think my my son, my husband, and my older son would like for me to go because I am one of those parents that kind uh-huh. of yells too much from the, the bench, the sidelines. So they probably would wish that I would be gone for a basketball game or two. Uh, I think the only thing worse than a overbearing mom is a uh, one that's disconnected from the family, especially if she's alcoholic or a meth addict. So yeah. it's uh, it's always middle of the road. So uh, they, uh, I'm sure that they'll have fond memories of you being involved in their lives in the in the future and be very happy of it and be a good model for their children. Yeah, it's just when you're you know six sixteen, your parents tend to embarrass you a little bit. Mm-hmm. Ah, it's that's what our job is to do at that yeah. age and. Uh, actually, many ages after that. So, well, great. Uh, that uh, sounds pretty good. I think we're going to get over to uh, Wheeling Wear and uh, see if Josh has anything new or if he's going to talk about uh, how the season's over and it'll be coming up soon. And, uh, well, I don't want to steal your thunder, Josh. What's what's going on at Wheeling Wear? Well, uh, this is something uh, that I, I definitely wanted to highlight. As you guys know, we are big fans of our armed forces. And uh, anytime we get a chance, at least out here, um, to get involved with, uh, with anything that supports the wounded warriors or uh, families of uh, fallen warriors, I get behind it 100%. And when I heard about this event, I was just like, yeah, we have to spread the word about this one. Now, this one is in uh, Fredericksburg, Texas. And uh, this is put on by the Military Jeepers. And they're, they're putting on Wheelers for the Wounded. Now, Wheelers for the Wounded is a nonprofit charity that goes, um, that goes on and, and helps disabled veterans out while taking them off-roading uh, for the weekend and, and raising money for the Wounded Warriors. Now, last year, this group raised, check this out, $22,000. Wow. And I hope this year they can do even better. Yeah, this is some serious stuff. Now, this event will be held February 27th at an off-road park called Canyons. Uh, Canyons Off-Road Park in Fredericksburg, Texas. You're welcome to join them. It is open invite and show your support for the veterans and the off-roading community. You can find more information on their Facebook ca- Facebook page called Wheelers for the Wounded slash Texas. Again, February 27th, Military Jeepers, Wheelers for the Wounded. Go check out their Facebook page and, uh, and guys, get in on this one. This is going to be a good one. Hey, don't forget Jeep, jun- Jeep Junkies, wherever you guys are wheeling. Doesn't matter if you pack it in, pack it out. Let's leave our outdoor recreation spots in as good, if not better condition than they were when we arrived. And remember to always tread lightly, stay on designated trails, and don't wheel where you're not supposed to. That's it for this week, guys. If you've got an event coming up in your area, let's get the word out. Whether it's a show and shine, a cruise in, a club run, or a fundraiser, or it doesn't matter if it's even a huge event like the Easter Jeep Safari, let us know by giving us a call or sending us an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com. Hey guys, there's always a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, uh, well, I guess the third seat's filled. 
Uh, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth seat open in this show. If you'd like to be a part of the Jeep Talk Show, just uh, send us an email at info at jeeptalkshow.com and we'll uh, set you up on, uh, well, what you're going to talk about, how often uh, you're going to do it, uh, generally speaking. We don't tie anybody down to specific time frames. And uh, we uh, get you set up with Dropbox and uh, uh, show you, even give you some hints on how to record the audio. So if you'd like to be a part of this show and you've got something to share, please give us a, drop us an email at info at jeeptalkshow.com. Make sure you guys like and visit our Facebook page, facebook.com slash jeeptalkshow. And, of course, all of our other social media sites. On, we are on the Twitter at Jeep Talk Show. Of course, as we mentioned earlier, we're on Stitcher Radio, TuneIn.com, iTunes as well, where you guys can download our entire show archive. And, of course, YouTube as well, youtube.com slash jeeptalkshow. Make sure you guys are subscribed to our feed so you guys don't miss a single thing. And, of course, uh, make sure you guys get the latest release uh, as we are uh, putting out new content all the time. Hey, and don't forget to check out my blog at JeepMama, J-E-E-P-M-O-M-M-A dot com. And you'll find all my connections to all my social media sites there. Oh, if you guys and, uh, have a voice that you need for one of your products or you need a review for one of your products here on the show, by all means, reach out to us. Or you can reach out to me personally at thevoiceofjosh.com. Oh, and don't forget, uh, if you're making purchases on Amazon, go over to uh, jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon. It'll take you straight over to Amazon, and any purchase that you make on Amazon will get a little credit for it. It won't cost you a dime more. It'll only take a, a few seconds more of your time, and you will help support this show financially. And, uh, you know, what can what can say better other than a good review, which you can do as well. You guys have a great Jeep week. See you later. See you later. Warning, the Jeep Talk Show is intended for entertainment purposes only. Use as directed. In relation to actual information, real Jeeps or persons living or dead are purely coincidental. The Jeep Talk Show is not responsible for lost or stolen items, and some assembly is required. For a full list of restrictions and contest rules, see store for details. Batteries not included. The Jeep Talk Show is for external use only. Contents under pressure. Side effects may include vertigo, uncontrollable laughter, or greasy discharge and false kung fu powers. The Jeep Talk Show and its contents are known to cause cancer in the state of California. It is probably not a federal law to use this product in a manner inconsistent with its labeling. The Jeep Talk Show may be a choking hazard. Keep out of reach of small children. All safety precautions must be observed when using the Jeep Talk Show. If you feel you've reached this recording in error, please hang up and try your call again.